artificial intelligence or more accurately perhaps generative artificial intelligence is storming into the uh, industry of media uh, various uh, tools are being used and developed and I thought I'd take the time this morning to talk about some aspects of how artificial intelligence is impacting on the media industries. So we're going to talk about uh, history. I'll cover some jargon and terminology because we're talking about uh, confusing things and also new terminology and some phrases that are just being uh, made up and alternated with other phrases. We're going to talk about prompt engineering, which is the new industry that's uh, coming up in media industries. We're going to look at some challenges to those uh, use of AI within these media industries. And we're also going to discuss some aspects of ethics, privacy and data protection. So let's get started firstly on some history and uh, it might surprise you to know that artificial intelligence is a term that was first coined by John McCarthy way back in 1955. He also wrote about the perceptron mas machine. Um, it has been used to describe machine actions which mimic human behavior. So the perceptron machine was the idea and this has been talked about as neural neural networking the idea that you can bring in a number of different factors and give them weightings in order to create a one solution and modern algorithms are a process of doing just that where you have a whole lot of different factors coming in together in order to produce a result so the example here, for example, um, is I'm asking, should I go out to a concert? I'm asking myself in my mind and, you know, there are various things that I might consider. Well, is, is the artist any good? Um, is it raining outside? Um, am I meeting up with friends? So perhaps am I obliged to come? Uh, how am I going to eat? Will there be food available? Is there going to be alcohol served? And these all have various different weightings according to how important I weight them. And an algorithm sort of forms a sum and adds a multiplier to all of those factors in order to come out with a yes or no answer. So big data refers to large volumes of data that can be mined for information. Back in 2015, I can remember going around giving guest lectures on big data. And at that time, the mantra was, um, if you're not paying for the product, you are the product. And social media platforms and uh, Google and various companies were doing their best to absorb as much data as possible in order to use that data cr to create tools. So Google Maps, for example, now gives you directions and is able to give um, running commentaries on what the traffic is like when you're driving somewhere because it has not just access to all of the data that people have shared with it about roads and conditions, but also continue to give it in terms of updated um, information about their GPS location. So essentially, artificial intelligence is that collective term for the tools, all those algorithms together, which are used to analyze that data. And there's just three uh, sort of areas where it can use the data. One is deviation detective, detection, and that's what things sort of stick out, what things are different and don't belong. Uh, the second factor is what is the probability of a future outcome? And the third factor, which we will know from uh, CCTV footage and the way that's used these days, pattern recognition. And I think people who have used Adobe products will uh, be aware that 
um, Adobe software such as Photoshop is extremely good at pattern recognition to the extent now where the selection tools are able to identify people, backgrounds and objects within photos. So machine learning example, I guess the most prominent one of those is the Google large language model, the language model for dialogue applications. And Google has by far the biggest data set for looking at those things. Um, the, the three that I can think of, the three chatbot examples are Google Bard, Microsoft Bing, and OpenAI's chatbot GPT. Um, which is continuing to develop and uh, as I understand it at the moment it's up to chatbot uh, GPT version 5 I think is in beta form at the moment. Although AI is the most popularly discussed in relation to the use of large language models to create responses which, the, which are also human language or text language driven Generative tools are also being created which can respond in non-textual or, more importantly, multimodal formats such as images, videos, posts, reports and plans. It's also being used in the creation of artwork and uh, a recent example is that of Peter Blake who is uh, the designer of, uh, I think, the Beatles album cover, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. And he's a very famous artist now in his 90s. And he was hired by, I think it was the Shanghai Meriden chain of hotels to go to Hong Kong and create an artwork in the foyer. So there were 300 people invited they had cameras set up to scan them and he created an illustrated portrait of all 300 people in a group image. And you can see that he was uh, quite impressed and sees great possibilities for use in the future. The Beatles have also uh, used generative AI in sampling John Lennon's voice and then going back to an old demo tape to create a new single, which got to number one in the charts in the UK. I'm just going to show you an example now of Stability AI, and this is a silent one, it's just running over, and you can see that the artist is removing the background and replacing it with uh, different elements, generating them on the fly uh, together with text prompts. So people are using that to sculpt um, pieces of work. And applications for generative AI, there are many applications available. Wonder.ai is one of them. Uh, such as uh, Lenza, which includes Photo Leap. Um, I don't know if you tried this, but it's great fun for um, creating avatars of yourself and trying on different filters. Some of these things are actually available on your phone. I must admit, I've, I've played with this one as an application on the phone. There's a free version available. It comes with a number of filters and you can create an animation. If you pay something like £5.95, then you have permission to download it without the watermark on it. So this um, AI art generator, Night Cafe, is another one. And you can see it actually gives you help and suggestions on what kind of prints you can put in. And it gives you a choice of styles and then creates more output. Now there are lots of image generators and I'm just going to fly through a few here. 
Um, Dell E and Dell E2 are probably the most famous because they were created by Open Open AI. Uh, the first one was Dell E, and now it's able to produce much higher resolution images, and the quality of the imaging is being increased. And also some issues such as too many legs in portraits and things like that are being corrected gradually as the data set builds up and they get feedback for improvements. We've also got Adobe Firefly, which at the moment I understand is still free to play with. And you can create your own imaginative images by text prompting, as this example shows. GenCraft is an example of one where um, you've got people with a group style getting together and creating stuff. Stability AI, we've already looked at an earlier part, but people are creating their own third party software based on developments with this software. Dream Studio. Um, Dream Studio is, I think, a Microsoft thing. I could be wrong there. Um, Mid Journey is very popular, and Mid Journey tends to attract people who are interested in making uh, romantic fantasy type images. So you see lots of showcase uh, stuff there, plus instructions on how to use it for creating your own unique images. Microsoft Designer, on the other hand, I think is aimed more at uh, the amateur and semi-professional social media creator. And you can see here, there's some examples of some animations, social media posts, and images being put together. We'll move on now to prompt engineering. Now, prompt engineering is at the heart of generative AI. <coughs> Excuse me. Creatives are able to use and manipulate and refine using prompts to create visual and auditory content. Prompt engineering, when it's practiced properly, is based on five principles of prompting. Giving direction, that is describing what you're imagining to get an output matching your vision. Specifying the format, for example, asking for a 400 word article or a 600 word article or a medium sized illustration or a photographic quality image. Providing examples can help some of these online tools uploading or saying like a Dali painting, for example. <coughs> you need to evaluate the quality, identify errors, and rate the responses, testing what drives performance, and dividing the labor. And by that, I mean, don't just simply use one prompt alone, but build and sculpt the thing that you're creating using your text uh, prompting bar. Copy.ai is a tool that's um, now being used to create a lot of content, as is other generators for social media. We're going to move on now to video generators. Now, video generators are able to now complete work which used to take days to be completed. I'm going to show you an example of how video generation is being used as a communication tool across languages. I think that uh, we've all heard recently that Taylor Swift was interviewed and answering the interview questions in Mandarin. And I think that is a good example of using this type of tool. I'll just uh, see if I can run the play and see what the volume level is like. The AI video. With our pre-designed templates and a realistic 
presented. It's so easy to use that no design or editing skills are required. Create your free video now. Welcome to Hour 1 AI. La única solución plug and play para convertir texto en video de ahí de alta calidad. Con nuestras plan... No design or editing skills are required. Create your free video. So these are, at the moment of talking, I think this is still available for a, a free demo that you can do. Uh, but you do need to try these out as soon as they become available because although most of these were available as free versions initially, once they get enough attention, they tend to vendor lock them and you need to use a paper or subscription. PhotoLeap, for example, I think I paid for a subscription £5.99 per month. So Gen 2, so next step forward in generative AI. And these are multimodal AI systems that can generate novel videos with text images or video clips. And there's some examples here that we can run through. I'll just see if I can play this one. This is an avatar. your product demo. To begin, choose from a wide variety of fully customizable video templates. Then, select your preferred AI avatar. Now, type in text in over 120 languages. And choose a narration style or local accent. Next, start editing your video. Easily change colors to match your brand identity and upload your logo or other brand assets that you can reuse for future videos. Alternatively, you can choose from a library of millions of royalty-free media assets such as videos, images, icons, and more. Add your text and position everything easily thanks to the snapping function. And if you need, you can also add a soundtrack. Record quick videos of your screen with a built-in screen recorder so you don't have to jump in between apps. Trim and crop your recording and adapt it to your scene Animate elements by dropping markers in your script. It's an easy, satisfying, and super quick way to make your video look more professional. When you're ready, click Generate Video and include or exclude automatic closed captions. Share your video with your team to get feedback and add comments. If you need to make changes, simply edit your video, adjust it, and generate a new one in minutes. Finally, when your video is ready, you can download it, share it, or embed it. And that's it. Try it for yourself today. Ciao, ciao. Uh, Celebi is also one used for video marketing, brainstorming, creating um, social media posts. Uh, has lots of capabilities and is aimed fully at the celebrities, the influencers, and people who want to market their companies or services on social media. Steve is a, an amusing new tool. It has a variety of um, applications within that one uh, software company. And a lot of these companies do offer more than one service. So you'll see a little bit of overlap in this uh, presentation. Uh, Voicebox is uh, created by Meta. The research team at Meta AI is excited to share our work on Voicebox, an all-in-one generative speech model. It's the first model that can generalize speech generation tasks, which it was not specifically trained to accomplish and it does so 20 times faster than current models. It uses a new approach to learn from raw audio and transcription from which it can create various outputs. Let's take a closer look at what it can do. Voicebox can take input text and output audio in a multitude of different voices. A quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. A quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. 
It can also generate a stylized speech output based on text and put and a short reference audio clip. The country's most forest and diverse ecosystems offer a six round box jumps over the lazy dog. This could one day give virtual assistants and MPPs more natural sounding voices. Style transfer enables transposition of vocal characteristics and background noise from a reference clip offer ample opportunities to observe and learn about the vast to a target audio clip with text input. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. I'll stop that at that point. Um, if you're interested in seeing some more examples, I'd encourage you to go on YouTube and search out some amusing videos that have been made of Joe Biden and Donald Trump uh, singing famous rock songs and playing guitar with their voices impersonated over the top. Glia Studios offers a range of video editing voiceover um, services. In this one, GenCraft, we're looking at going from a drawing and making a photorealistic dog. NVIDIA AI is another one of these tools and they're growing by the day. In this sort of quiet run through, we're seeing an example of how quickly it is to actually generate social media posts with your branding. I'll just stop that there. So what are the challenges? Um, well, the considerations that we have are reasoning, problem solving. How are we going to develop the skills of reasoning and problem solving amongst people coming into the general, uh, the next industries? Um, how are we going to represent knowledge? Um, and how are we going to teach students within a generative AI environment? Planning uh, in a rapidly evolving landscape, the range of tools available is increasing enormously and the costs are going rapidly up and down too. So the cost of running a business um, is fluctuating enormously. On the education front, of course, we're looking at how do we, how do we teach? What kind of skills do our students need to have as young graduates? We're looking at natural language processing to include sentiment analysis weighting. So in other words, we're trying to generate persuasive audio outputs and also to include them in the prompt engineering. We're considering cultural biases and political biases. So for example, um, we can end up with uh, generative tools that are only creating things that are representing the average and not being diverse enough for our population. And of course, there's the ethical and legal considerations to take into account. I'm going to fly over the music generators. I think that um, it's enough to say that they're also developing extremely rapidly and people are using them to generate uh, music for voiceovers, for background sound, for ambient music and also for some impersonations. Ethical considerations in education is uh, also developing rapidly and different universities are developing their own guidelines. So in our own university, we say in your field, there may be permitted uses, um, but their uses need to be declared. So firstly, you need to be specifically given permission uh, to use an AI tool before you can use it. And also you're given details about under what circumstances and how you can use it. And I encourage you to go and look at the Harvard University guidelines, our own University of Hertfordshire, for a more 
culturally diverse selection perhaps go and look at one in Australia and uh, Singapore University also is developing guidelines so just as people try to limit their grocery shopping to ethically sourced products, we may one day wish to use only tools which generatively create content from permissible sources. So I'm talking about um, the equivalent of what we do with academic referencing, where we have to declare the provenance of the sources and they have to be reputable sources. Uh, so we're talking about limits of artificial generative intelligence. We have to consider the person, the potential for harm, ethical machines, machine consciousness, sentience and mind, and the prospects of superintelligence and how that could or should be used and developed. I'll stop this presentation at this point because uh, it's 25 minutes and we need to stop at some point. I could go on. This is normally something that we would discuss over an hour and I'm sure there'll be degree courses in the future for it.